when students are in breakout rooms, one way to keep them engaged and on task is for each group to have their own Google Slides where they have edit access. So I've added on to pile of slides, which is now a part of first slide. So if you go on to alicekeeler.com slash first slide, it's going to create a spreadsheet. alicekeeler.com slash first slide. It'll ask you to make a copy. And you will need to wait probably about a minute for the menu to show the add-on. The add-on is not available in the marketplace. You will need to wait for the code to load when you go to alicekeeler.com slash first slide. Once the code loads, you can go to the add-ons menu and you see first slide and you can choose show sidebar. Once the sidebar loads, you would normally choose a folder to do the first slide. Now, first slide assumes that you have a folder in Google Drive with a Google Slides per student. So we are not going to assume that. So you'll notice that when you scroll down a little bit, that I've actually added pile of slides into the sidebar of first slide. So I'm going to click on go to pile of slides. And that's going to open up this menu, which allows me to show my list. Now, what I would normally do is put my roster of students on this list along with their email address, and it'll create a folder in Google Drive, and then it creates a Google Slides per student to allow each student to have their own copy, and it gives them edit access to those files. So that's a way that you can get around if you don't have, say, Google Classroom that automatically does something like that for you. So I'm going to, instead of putting my student names, I'm going to say group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, and group 5. And the email addresses are actually optional. You don't have to put those. Those are there just in case you wanted to share it with a specific student. You could put their email address in there. But I'm going to do this with breakout rooms with different groups of students. So actually, I just want to click Make Slides over here in the sidebar. And it is now for each group going to create a Google Slides. Once it is done, it puts the link to these Google Slides here in the sidebar. And I can go ahead and open and see here is my Group 1 Slides. Now, it gives me the option to set slides. So you see I have a Google Slides that I've already created. I'm going to copy the link up here at the top in the URL, Control C copy, and over in the sidebar I want to set slides, and I paste the link to the slides that I'm going to send there. So I'm going to go ahead and choose send all the slides, and what it's doing is now taking all of these slides from this slide deck and it is pushing it into these group slides. So in a minute, I'm going to see that this goes from one slide to having all the slides. So you can see that those slides from my slide deck were pushed not only into the group three, but if I open up any of the group slides, I am going to see those slides are in there to give them something structured to do while they're in the breakout rooms. Now, if you come down on the menu in the spreadsheet, you see that I have the breakout room options. I'm going to go to breakouts. And one of the options here is to share spreadsheet. So you'll notice that my first slides spreadsheet says private. So the students don't have access to this spreadsheet and they don't have access to these links. So if I choose share spreadsheet, it's going to export the links to each of the slides and it's going to make that spreadsheet, okay, it's going to make that spreadsheet anyone can view. So in this new spreadsheet, you see that I have each of the group slides. I have the link to each of the group slides. And you'll see the sharing permissions are automatically anyone on the internet with this link can view. So if I copy the link and I put this link into the chat, or I put this link into your learning management platform at Google Classroom or someplace, students are able to find for their group 
the link to their individual group slides. Now the problem with this is, is the students do not have edit access to the slides. Do you remember in the email column when I created the slides, I did not put any email address, so no one has edit access. So back in the pile of slides, first slide, I am going to choose enable editing, and this is going to take each of the slide decks and convert it to anyone with the link can edit. So I get a notification, the slides are updated to allow for edit access. So let's take a look at that. This was private just a few minutes ago, and now when I click on it, you'll see that not only does everyone have access to the slides, but it, they have edit access to the slides. So when the students go to this spreadsheet that is broke out, uh, popped out, you can click on it, the students can click on it, and they're gonna be able to get into their group slides and they will be able to edit these slides. Now, while students are working in their breakout rooms and in their groups, you might want to send them a new slide to give them a new prompt of something else to work on or to look at. So you'll see back in my original slide deck, I've actually added a slide for them to discuss why grammar is important, and this is slide four. So in the spreadsheet, I'm going to click send slide to slides, and it's going to ask me which slide I want to send. And I want to send slide four. And it is now going to update each of the slide decks. You can see down here it's letting me know that those are being updated. It takes just a little bit of time. It's not instantaneous, but it is relatively quick. So you'll notice that this now, this let's discuss is in each of the group's slides. I was able to push that to help them to continue the conversation discussion while they're in their breakout rooms. Coming back to the spreadsheet, I can send here with times up, if I choose times up, it is going to send to each of the slides a notification that they need to return back from the breakout room. You'll notice it adds it to every slide because I don't know which slide they're on and just gives them a friendly warning. Now these can obviously be deleted. They're just a shape text box letting them know that time is up and for them to please return. And you'll see that did indeed show up on all of the slides. If you don't want to tell them that time is up, you can use slide stamp. You can send any message you want. Well, you can see that it is updating over here. I'm gonna update the slides, okay. And now when I go check the slides, you'll see it has this cloud on each of the slides, letting them know what to do next. And the students, can, again, can just delete those if they are in the way, but it allows you to send them a message to each of the group breakout rooms where they're hopefully collaborating around a common Google Slides. Now, once they are done and you want them to finish collaborating, you can switch it to no edit. So at first I had selected enable editing, which gave edit access to anyone with the link. So now it is updating that access to revoke editing for the students. So they'll no longer to be able to contribute to the group slides. So let's take a look at that. So when I click on the share button, you'll notice it now says anyone on the internet with this link can view where it previously gave them edit access, and it has revoked the edit access, so they can now just see the work, and you can now collect it back and bring the students back from the breakout room to discuss the work that they did.